two voices you'll hear during our time together. Whether you know it or not, they won't stop speaking. They never stop speaking. One shouts, one whispers, and both will continue to speak, whether we acknowledge them or not.
need your spirit to fall fresh on us, Jesus. We can't do nothing without you, God. We need you, oh God, more than we ever needed you, Lord. Oh Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit, God. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing, God. We just thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining us online this morning. It is my privilege each week to come into your home and share the word of God. So let's pray and get into God's word for today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace and your mercy upon our life. We thank you that you continue to lead us and guide us in these perilous times. Father, we pray and ask that you open our eyes and our ears to hear what the Spirit has to say in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to continue in the sermon series, Faith for the Unknown. This morning's sermon uh, is entitled, Second Chances in the Unknown. I believe more than ever before, in the era that we are living in, we need more faith. Uh, I, I told you and I shared it with you a few days ago that in the era that we're living in, we're not just facing one pandemic, we're actually facing three pandemics. Of course, we are facing the pandemic of the coronavirus. Secondly, we are facing the pandemic of racism. We're having to deal with that. And not only those two things, but we're also dealing with something that's been with us a very long time. That's the pandemic of hunger. All over America, more people are going hungry than ever before. That's why I'm happy to say to the New Legacy Church, thank you for showing up last Wednesday, driving through the parking lot and sharing canned goods, dried beans and rice and boxes of cereals so that we can continue our partnership with the DeSoto Food Bank as they continue to feed our community. We have partnership with them and you are keeping us strong in partnering with them. Now some of you may be saying, Pastor, I missed that. Guess what? I'm going to give you a second chance. Yep, you get a second chance. All you have to do is this week come by the church on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday and drop off your dry beans and rice, canned goods, and your boxes of cereal. And then you can be counted in with the rest of us. And then we can gather it all together and the food bank will pick it up and they will give God the glory. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, that we are able to give God the glory for all his goodness. 
I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 12. That's generally where I start in this series, or if not there, somewhere along the line in the sermon, I have been mentioning Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. This is what this series is based on. So let's go there. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And just like always, take your pen out, put a line up under, fix our eyes on Jesus. Each week, I've been telling us, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. There's a lot out there, a lot of talking heads. And what I've been saying is, yes, listen to the experts. Listen to what they have to say. But all that other stuff, scratch it. Don't get involved in it. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the one who's going to lift us up. He's the one who's going to strengthen and encourage our faith. All that other stuff can bring your faith down. But even in the midst of that, if we're not careful, we can miss opportunities that God wants for us because we're not only distracted sometimes, but we're so focused on all the stuff that's going on, we miss God. And then, let's face it, sometimes, because of the opportunities that God presents us, sometimes we just don't do it. But I want to reassure you, if you're in that place where you just did not do what God wanted you to do, or you just missed it, God always gives second chances. He always gives us second chances. I don't know about you, but I need second chances. Matter of fact, I need one, two, three, four. Wait a minute. I don't have enough fingers and toes to count how many second chances I've had and how many more second chances, yeah, I'm going to need. So like me, I'm sure you not only need a second chance today, but you're grateful that God always gives second chances. Let's go uh, to Jonah chapter 1. Uh, Jonah the prophet who knows about second chances. Jonah 1, beginning at verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amite. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. <laughs> what a tall order. Preach against it. Don't preach peace. Don't preach joy. Don't preach love. Preach against them. He says, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound uh, for the port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarsha to flee from the Lord. I don't know why Jonah thought he could flee from the Lord, because <laughs> God is everywhere. But he tried to flee from the Lord. Verse 4 goes on to say, Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship, threatened to break up. Verse 5. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God. Underline, his own God. Here's why I want you to underline that. All over America, in these pandemics that we are facing at the same time, people are calling on their God. And a lot of them are not calling on the true and living God. And they're not getting any answers because their God is dead. But we serve a, a living God. And I'm going to show you exactly uh, what happened and how uh, this is an opportunity that we're living in where we can be not only an example, but a great blessing to help point people who are calling on those dead gods call on the true and living God and get some relief in their lives. Uh, listen to what happened. 
All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out on his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone be below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. <laughs> the man of God, not paying attention to what's going on because he's running. Let me say this to you. Many times, when we don't act on God-given opportunities, we lose them forever. But there are opportunities that we didn't take advantage of, that we can reach back and get them because they are not lost. They are just unused. The question of the day is, Pastor, how do we recover the unused opportunities that God has given us? Here's the first thing. Take responsibility for our negligence. Take the responsibility that we simply didn't do what God asked us to do. Or uh, repent, uh, uh, take responsibility that we did not follow through on what we said we would do. Jonah 1.12 says this about taking responsibility. Jonah said to the sailors when they came to him, and says, we've cried out to our God. Now cry out to your God. Maybe your God will save us. Uh, apparently, they understood by this point that their God was not going to save them. There's a lot of people in our nation as things continue to go the way that it's going, and it may get worse. They're going to find out once and for all that their God can't help them. And they're going to be looking for another God. And this is a good time that we point them once and for all to the true and the living God. The true and the living God. Here's Jonah's response. Pick me up and throw me into the sea. And it will become calm. I know that it is my fault. He took responsibility. He said, I know it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. I'm responsible for that. This is why you're going through all of that. Because of what I did. Proverbs 28, 13 says, A man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, he gets another chance. He gets another chance. When we take responsibility, when we own up to our disobedience, uh, uh, when we own up to the fact that we just didn't do what God asked us to do, God will help us and he'll give us a second chance. And not only uh, do we need to take responsibility, we should, number two, repent and give praise to God. Yes, those two do go together. Repent and praise God. Jonah 2 9. This is part of a prayer that Jonah was praying. He says, But I, with shouts of grateful praise, underline that word grateful, grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. It's important that we understand, once we repent, that we praise God for all his goodness. Uh, you should, this week, read chapter 2 of Jonah. It's really a prayer of everything that Jonah went through. One, one part says, I cried to the Lord and he showed mercy. Jonah go through all of this incident of how he repented and called on God and God gave him a second chance. Jonah became grateful for how good God is. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says this, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ. In everything. Jonah was grateful and thankful in the belly of a big fish. Jonah became grateful 
even when he thought he was going to die. Jonah became grateful when he thought all hope was lost. There's no way I'm going to get out of this. He became grateful. And that's what we must do. If we are going to get to the place where we can use those opportunities that we pass. See, many of us, before COVID-19 hit, before the pandemic, there are some things that was left on the table that we didn't get around to. God spoke to us. He inspired us. He encouraged us to do certain things. He inspired us to use our gifts. And then many times, he just flat out asked us or instructed us to do some things, and we never got around to it. And now we are in the pandemic era, and many of us are thinking, I'll never be able to get that back. Well, there are some things some opportunities that we left on the table before our pre-coronavirus uh, that we can reach back and get those opportunities and let God use us to bring glory to him. But we have to become grateful. Here's what I would like for you to do. Think back on all the Christmases and birthdays and all the celebrations of the past, and all the gifts that you receive, and then think about the gifts that stand out the most, your favorite ones that you got. And then I want to say, just as your family and friends have given you gifts, our Father in heaven have given us great gifts also, not only has he shown us mercy and grace, but he has given us gifts, mercy, joy, and peace, and then he has given us spiritual gifts as well. Here's what I would like to do. I would like for us to pray like Jonah did. Take out a moment, and let's just pause. Yeah, right here in the service. This is, after all, church is unusual. I've been telling you for weeks, we can't do church like we used to anymore. It's really unusual, uh, some of the things that we happen to do. So let's, let's pause right now and just give a prayer of a grateful attitude to God. It can go something like this. Matter of fact, let's just pray. I will lead it and you fill in the blanks. Let's pray this. You can say God, thank you for being so generous to me. You have given me so much. I'm especially grateful for how you bless me with the gift of, you fill it in, the gift of faith, serving, administration, whatever giftedness God has given you. Tell him how grateful you are that he has entrusted you with those gifts. And then you pray, confirm my giftings as I serve you and others as I recover the unused opportunities you have given me. Amen. Thank him and be grateful for all the giftedness that he has given you. Pray that prayer. Not only today, but pray it this week. Take out time to be grateful for all that God has done and his giftedness. Now, there's a step that you have to go further. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do it. Not only be grateful for the giftedness that God has given you, but we have to put him to work. Well, Pastor, you know, it's kind of limited uh, Church is closed. We're not having regular services. We're just online. I can't use my gift. Yes, you can. Let me show you. I have volunteer opportunities right now for greeters, hosts, ushers, ministers uh, who can pray, prayer ministers, camera people, computer people. Well, Pastor, I get people who can run a camera or who can work with a computer. I get those, but how can I be a greeter 
when we're online? How, how can I be a host of something that's online? How can I usher anybody uh, when I can't see them? Well, you can. Every Sunday morning, you can do all of those things virtually. You can do it while we're online and while the service is going. If you would like to not only go ahead and use your gift, but if you want to volunteer and help us in those areas, why don't you just email me at pastor at newlegacycc.org. And then once you contact me and say, count me in, I don't know how we go do it, Pastor, but I'm in. I, I, I'm ready to try. Then join me this coming Wednesday to our Zoom Fellowship Wednesday that we are having from 7 to 8. And right there in the Zoom meeting, I'm going to tell you how you can be an usher, how you can be a greeter, how you can be a prayer minister right there online on Sunday morning. I promise you, you're going to go, wow, I didn't know we could do this. Yes. You know why? Because even in the midst of when a lot of people don't know what to do, can't see forward, God is steady showing us that he is God and that he is working. Let me share this with you. Just last week, last Sunday, three people gave their life to Christ right there online. They acknowledged right during the sermon, at the end, when we prayed the prayer, they acknowledged that they were receiving Christ for the very first time. That is powerful. So if you want to be a part of helping uh, the church when that happens, be on the Zoom call this week. Go ahead, email us, and we'll send you all the information how to get on the Zoom call. And if you don't know how to do Zoom, call my trusted ministry assistant, Barbara, and she'll walk you through the process. Again, contact me at... Pastor Bob at newlegacycc.org. Let's go ahead and use our gifts for God's glory. So how do we recover these unused opportunities? I want to close with this. How do we recover unused opportunities? Number one, take responsibility of our negligence, repent and give praise to God, and lastly, embrace God's grace. Embrace God's grace. Jonah 3, verses 1, 2 says this. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. This is his second chance. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. When we need it most. I think where we are right now, this is a time where we need God's grace more than ever before so that we can make it through this time that we are facing, not only in our nation, but in our personal lives. But many times when we get our second chance and get all stirred to move forward and give it another try, the enemy comes in and tries to steal uh, what God is doing in our life and tell us uh, we're not good enough. We don't deserve a second chance. But here's what I want to say to you today as we close. Don't let unused opportunities define you. Don't let what you have not done define you. You know why? Because that's not really you. That's not how God created you. God has placed his Holy Spirit on the inside of you, and you can rise up and move forward. Why? Because you've done everything. You've repented. Uh, you've taken responsibility. You can move forward, but the enemy don't want you to move forward. This is why I'm saying don't let uh, unused opportunities define you uh, because the enemy will come and say uh, you didn't do what God asked you to do, so you don't have the right to do anything now. Yes, you do. 
That's not you. That's the enemy saying you can't. So don't let unused opportunities define you. And secondly, don't let unused opportunities disqualify you. Don't let what you did not do count you out. Don't let it count you out. God's grace is sufficient for you. So how do we take these second chances? How do we put these second chances into action? I'm going to give you an opportunity. I've given you one, now I'm going to give you another opportunity uh, to put these second chances into action. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says, This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward. Let me say this. A few months ago, when I read this scripture, it meant something different to me. Because when I would read this, when I would talk to you about it, it was always centered around trying to convince you, trying to get you to understand you needed to be in these pews. And now that we can't be together, now that you can't be in these pews, I see it differently now. It doesn't mean the same to me anymore. So I've had to switch thinking about trying to get you into the pews. Matter of fact, I don't even think about it as much. All I'm doing now is hearing God. Yes, I want us back in this building. Yes, I want us to be able to shake hands and hug and love on each other. All of those things are important. We need that. But we can't allow what we can't do hinder what God wants to do right now. We can't sit around and just hope and wait that this thing hurry up and is over with so we can get back to all the stuff we used to do. God is calling us to take advantage of the opportunities right now, and he does not want us to miss it. So what do I see differently now? I focus my time now on finding ways that we can encourage and urge each other through Facebook, yep, I have a Facebook account. I hardly ever use it, but every now and then I use it, and I think I've responded once or twice, but many of you are experts on Facebook. Use it to encourage one another. One of the things that I do use a lot is Zoom because I like seeing people. It feels so good, those of you who have been on a Zoom call with me, to see your wonderful smiling face. It feels so good. I'm spending my time, and you should too, finding more ways than just thinking about being in this building, but take opportunities, this technology that God has given us, and use it to encourage, strengthen, and bless other people. That's what God is calling us to do in this season. Let's not get caught up with worrying about getting back to this building. Uh, we're going to get back here. God is preserving this building, and we are going to get back to it. But in the meantime, God wants us to be an encouragement to one another through all the technology and ways that he has provided us. We did this a few weeks ago. Let's do it again. Let's take a moment and celebrate someone that you are grateful for. Just think of someone who has uh, helped you along the way. This is how it looks. Uh, the person that I have in my heart, and I'm reminded his name is Clarence. I'm grateful to him because he inspired me to become a good provider for my family. I remember I was a, a young preacher boy. I was in my early 20s. He was like a father to me. And man, I was dumb as a rock. Thought I knew everything. Didn't have a clue. Always messing up our family's money. And I remember one day he pulled me to the side. <laughs> uh, this is how he mentored. He, he grabbed me in the chest 
And he says, I had messed up something, needed to borrow some money. And he knew I made good money because I worked for him. He grabbed me in the chest. And he says, from this day forward, Brother Davis, if you ever put your family in jeopardy like this again, this is what he said. He said, I'm going to kill you. Oh, he was old school. I said, yes, sir. But I had watched him with a sixth grade education. He had two businesses that he ran very well and made a lot of money. And that's what he was teaching me. And now he was saying, don't squander what God has given. Use it the way you're supposed to, to take care of your family. So I'm grateful to him. Why don't you think of someone who's had an impact on your life that has encouraged you? Matter of fact, like we did a couple of weeks ago, take a moment. Thank God for them. And yes, take out your cell phone right here in this service because we're doing church is unusual. Take out your cell phone and take a moment. Text that person. Encourage them with a message of gratitude. Just let them know how much you thank them for all that they have done and encouraged you in. Do that right now. Text them. And then last time I, I, I asked you, a uh, matter of fact, uh, some of you are chatting with us. You're on our church website looking at, at the broadcast, and you're just chatting up a, a, a storm by now. Why don't you go ahead and chat to someone that you see that's on, 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 online with you and just give them a shout out. Chat to them. Whatever their name is, chat it out and say, I appreciate you for being there when I needed some help. Whatever it is, uh, we are family, and, 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 and this will encourage others to go ahead and encourage someone else. So, so you can text them, but if you see them, that they online, go ahead and chat and let them and the world know how much you appreciate them and what they've done for you. Matter of fact, let's just take this moment to thank God for all that he has done and what he is doing in our life because he's been awful good to us. If you were here with me, this is where I would say, no one moving, everyone being still. I want to pray, and that's what I want to do right now. There are some of you who missed it with God pre-coronavirus, and you need a second chance. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. And then there may be someone who has never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. But you want to do that today because you want a second chance and you want this second chance to last forever. If that's you right now, raise your hand. God sees it. But not only that, if you're online, and you're watching on your computer or your tablet or your smartphone, there's a button that's going to pop up that says, I commit. That just simply means I commit my life to Christ for the first time. If that's you, go ahead and press that button. And then there's this prayer for all the rest of us. We may need to just say, God, forgive us. Forgive me, Father, for not doing everything I could have done before coronavirus hit our nation. I want to pray those prayers so that God can use us as he gives us a second chance. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are a God of second chances. Father, in the name of Jesus, if this you, you just agree with it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've never known you as my Lord and Savior. So today, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. 
And Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart right now and be uh, the Lord of my life. Lord, I, God, I want you to, to be in charge of my life. I want you to run my life now. I've made a mess of it. So, Father, I thank you for forgiving me of my sin. Jesus, I thank you for coming into my heart right now to be my Lord and Savior. So you can lead me from here on out. That you can guide me through all of these dark days. I thank you for it right now, Jesus. And then, Father, for those of us, God, that you've given opportunities to. You gave us many opportunities before the coronavirus pandemic. Before the racism pandemic. And even, God, for years, in the pandemic of hunger, you've given us a chance to serve. <laughs> and we didn't take you up on it, God. We ask you to forgive us, Father. We want to be used by you. Help us, Father. We pray these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Now look at me. Don't you feel good? I do. <laughs> Every time I get it right with God and get my second chance, it's a load off of me. Let's continue to worship God. And the way we can continue is many has already done. Many have given online. You've given your offering online through Givelify app, through our website, You've Given Online. But then there may be some of you who dropped it off, you mailed it, we got some of you, your money this week that you've given to God. But then there may be some of you who haven't given yet. If you're watching on your tablet, your computer, or your smartphone, you can give right there. You should see a button that pops up. All you have to do is tap that button. It'll take you to our uh, giving site. And you can give as God has prospered you this week. And you know our motto, we do not beg for money. We believe that God will touch your heart and that you will give accordingly. And what you give will be sufficient, not only to take care of what we have and maintain it, but you'll give us more to do things so we can out do outreach and be a blessing to others. Let's pray right now that God will give us all that we have need of. Father, we thank you that you are a great God. You are a God that is more than enough. And we thank you for it. So as we give today, God, we ask that you bless those who are giving today and those who's already given and God yes we pray this prayer there may be some people God watching who's having a hard time and they're not able to give God I pray that you help them that you give them their breakthrough that they've been praying for God that you meet all of their needs and then God I pray that you bless us all bless us all God a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. It was so good to be with you. Stay tuned. We have a great song of encouragement coming up, and then right after that, we have some special announcement. So please, finish uh, the service with me as we listen to this wonderful song and get instructions about all the great things that are happening at New Legacy. I'll see you next week. God bless you.
children of Israel trapped at the Red Sea.
One of my favorite, favorite verses in the Bible is Jude 124. Um, and it says, to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us blameless before his glorious presence with great joy. That verse has always uh, just been an encourage encouragement to me and reminded me of the truth that it's gonna be God who ultimately keeps me. But I rarely studied or even read all of the verses that preceded it. And so for this study, I was just intrigued to see what the book of Jude was about. I wanted to know why he ended, uh, like what was it that he said before verse 24 that led him to verse 24. I recognized while we reading it that Jude just has so many things to say that I need to hear and that other Christians need to hear. Um, when he talks about contending for the faith, that's what we're all trying to do all the time, whether we are trying to do it as a student in a university, whether we are a mother uh, trying to do it with our teenage children, whether we are uh, in our workplace in our nine to five trying to wrestle with particular doctrines and particular truths that people may not understand or don't believe. That's exactly what the book of Jude is about. And so for me, it felt like, man, this dude is speaking my language. I want to study this and I want to invite other people to study it with me because I think it'll really help us a lot uh, to, you know, figure out how to serve God in this world that doesn't believe him. <laughs>